guys, WWE TD this week. I'm back. We've got an audio podcast coming for you this week as well. We had a big week last week, big weekend this past weekend. I want to thank everybody that came out for our uh, annual DFA event. They're getting bigger and badder every year. I got to say, we're starting to get the, the knack of this event thing. Obviously, we're real estate investors first, you know, educators second, and event throwers third. So, you know, we're, we're working on getting our, our event status up higher, at least our abilities when it comes to throwing them. And I think we did a really good job this year. I think everybody really enjoyed themselves. And, you know, obviously there's always a few things that we can do to improve, but I think the improvements from last year to this year, not that last year's event was bad by any means, but I think we made a lot of improvements and the group just had a really, really good time. Had a lot of great people there, as I mentioned in the last week's show. And I just want to thank everybody that came out for it. It was awesome to hang out with everybody, meet everybody face to face. You know, not only learn from everybody in the classroom, but we had a, a few nights out at the bars and, uh, well, restaurant bars and then bars on uh, night three. Uh, I didn't make it out for night three, but I know you guys had a good time. So I'm here driving today. I'm actually headed to an appointment to talk about buying a couple more lots that are abutting one of our properties that uh, we've got going on right now that we just completed a two lot partition on. These people need a sewer easement from me, or they're in a position where they have to pump their sewage, which they don't want to do, so I've kind of got some leverage on them, and they want to sell their lots potentially too, so we'll see how it shakes out. But hey, I wanted to focus this week's recording on a topic that pertains to something that I kind of thought about while we had the event this past weekend, and then also another podcast that I heard not too long ago that was all about entrepreneurship and cycling. So like, has an entrepreneur cycled? terms of like have you started a business has that business gone well has it gone in the shit tank and have you come back from that to you know redirect pivot whatever you want to call it to it then have success again and they say that you know you're not really an entrepreneur until you've had you know a full cycle or multiple cycles and I tend to agree with that because you know I've been through a few cycles both on the entrepreneurial side and on the uh, real estate side but I want to relate that to is is real estate right so right now, there's a lot of people out there. This is like the Carnacea Insta Guru time where everybody's a guru, right? That's just kind of the nature of the beast right now, which, you know, I, I get it. We've been on a long upward trajectory in terms of market conditions. And with that comes a lot of, you know, self-appointed experts that then, you know, start coaching programs and start groups and, and all kinds of things and sell courses, which, you know, is fine. It's America, it's capitalistic society. If you can get people to buy it, you know, I'm not gonna hate on you. But what I wanted to say was in terms of those of you that are investing in programs like this, that are hiring mentors like this, be very careful because the one takeaway that I got from our events and just kind of solidified it in my head, but you know, the most successful people at the event have been through multiple cycles, right? And the people with the most robust and rock solid businesses in terms of how their business operates, how they generate revenue for their business, and how they invest in real estate, they've been through multiple cycles. And so what I gotta say is, if your mentor or somebody that you are paying for coaching, consulting, or somebody that you're following and you're following their every move and, and every piece of advice they give, if they haven't cycled, if they haven't cycled in the real estate business and they haven't been through at least a couple of cycles, you know, talking up, down, up, then, you know, I would be a little weary to take what it is that they say is the gospel. Because here's here's a quick example, right? Wholesaling right now is the easiest way to money, so it's the, usually the easiest thing that people put out there in terms of bait to get you to bite on it, to give them money to be coached to do that, right? Which is fine, wholesaling is a pretty simple concept. I mean, you can screw it up, don't get me wrong. But the people on the lowest rung of real estate investing can teach that, and that's generally what happens. Now, there's people on higher rungs that come back down and they teach wholesaling as well, and there's nothing wrong with that. But the reality is, is that those people that teach wholesaling, that that's all they do is wholesale, they haven't cycled, more than likely. And you know what's gonna happen, and this is just, this is just a reality, this is fact. When the market cools, and it inevitably will, wholesalers that are just wholesalers, they're probably gonna get other jobs. And gurus that are just selling how to wholesale type courses and, and that's their coaching program and that's the basis of the whole thing, they're not gonna be gurus anymore. They're not gonna be selling programs anymore. Number one, because people are gonna have less money and they're not gonna wanna spend and real estate's not gonna be as attractive and that's not gonna be the American dream to chase with that money that they do have to spend. But number two is, you know, when the market cools, wholesalers are not the king of the hill anymore. 
right now wholesalers are, are inventory providers for people that don't work on providing their own inventory and so it works but as the market cools guess what deals are everywhere and so even if you as a wholesaler continue to find deals because that's what you do that's great but right now with where we're at the market cycle a rehabber will pay you 40 50 grand or more on an assignment fee right and they'll do it okay because they need a deal and they're chasing the dream that's on the other end. In a slow market, if you're trying to whack people for 30, 40, 50 K, guess what? They're going to tell you to go F yourself because they don't see the value in it. In a slower market, they feel like they're taking all the risk and you're getting all the easy gravy. And so that's what happens in a slower market. The reliance on wholesalers becomes much less. The value that the market puts on wholesalers becomes much less. And therefore, you know, wholesaling as an actual way to generate decent income in a down market, very difficult to do. You have to have other ways to monetize those leads. You have to have a machine that allows you to, to some degree, retail the stuff that you're able to buy at a wholesale price in order to make any sort of a decent living. Or, you know, there's a variety of other things, but I'm just talking specifically about how you need to pivot in your, in your wholesale niche. So, if you're following somebody right now that says wholesaling is the way to riches and, you know, that's just what you're gonna do and you're not trying to continue to build your business, because again, I'm going back to it, you gotta continue to constantly strive to build your business. If you're not doing that, guess what? The next slow market, tide's gonna wash you out and it's gonna wash them out too. So think about that important, important thing. If you're in this business and you're trying to make it a business, build your business. Don't just stop at rung one, which is wholesaling. You wanna continue to grow and continue to do more and more things. And if you don't, well, I hate to tell you, but the tide's gonna wash you out in the next down market. So next time the tide goes out. So that's the reality of it. That's what it is, folks. That's the truth. That's the real deal. So. As I always say, I may not walk on water, but I do walk on my own job sites. See you guys next week.